but a equal to tau squared, b is equal to 2 tau psi, and c is equal to 1. If you use that, you can find that the roots of that polynomial, so the roots of tau squared s squared plus 2 tau psi s plus 1 is equal to 0, that's what we're trying to solve. The roots of that can be easily found as s is equal to minus psi plus or minus in the multiple spaces, so s is equal to minus psi plus or minus the square root of psi squared minus 1 and all over tau. So a little bit of algebraic manipulation using a equals tau squared, b is equal to 2 tau psi, and c is equal to 1. Substitute into the quadratic formula that you have learned and seen many times that you can simplify to get those two roots. Okay, the roots of representation B are the most the straightforward represent there. The first root is minus one over tau one and minus one over tau two. So that's that's true. We cover the roots of representation. Then, final quick recap from last time is what does that xi mean? Well, xi is a damping factor, and we spent a little bit of discussion last time on that. So, let's perhaps re recap that if you've already got it, so you don't need to re rewrite this down. But for those of you that weren't here, when xi is greater than 1, we call the system overdamped. <coughs> And it implies the roots are real and unequal. We said that if psi has roots equal to 1, I'm going to show you an example of how that arises. We call the system critically damped. is when xi's roots, oh sorry, xi lies as a value between 0 and 1. So we call this underdamped. And here the roots are complex conjugates. Okay, by that we mean the roots have the form S is some constant A plus or minus the complex number j times e. So j is your complex number, square root of minus 1. So those are the three cases. And I ended off the class by looking at this curve that shows the response for the three cases. So let's take a look at this. When xi is greater than 1, the system is overdamped, the response is a rise up and then it reaches its steady state value. The critical redam system, the xi equals to 1, has a faster rise and almost actually looks first order in its response. It gets to steady state and the characteristic of that response, this green, this green curve of xi equal 1, is the minimum energy curve. It gets to the steady state with the minimum deviation, minimum use of energy. Zides that are between 0 and minus 1 always will have some sort of oscillatory behavior due to this complex conjugate roots. So if you look back to the class tables, when we have complex conjugate roots, you will see a sign and a cosine term show up in the time domain representation. And that starts to introduce some oscillatory behavior into the response. So that's the logo that's on the course website. I mentioned that last time. And the thing I didn't point out last time, as I get smaller and smaller, so closer to zero, the response is more and more oscillatory. Okay, so small 
values of xi very oscillatory. Larger values of xi that approach one from below tend to get and look more and more critically that. Yes, zero is the lowest. It can't be zero because then we don't have a second order system. No, I know negative. Because if this is zero, then we have no then we, you know, we have a very type of system. So those are the three characteristics. And then I ended off the class by demonstrating this door example. What was the door spring? Over damped, under damped, critically damped? Under damped, right? So to show that if this door shuts. There's a residual energy. The fact that it's banging means that if it's hitting the frame, if this frame weren't here, the door would come into the class and oscillate and eventually shut. So this spring here could be tightened up. If I tightened up this bolt on the spring, I could make the spring become critically damped. If I tightened it up even more, I'd make the system over damped. Okay, so that the response would be very slow closing of the door. So, I'm oh sorry, not tighten the spring, loosen the spring, I should say, right? If I loosen that spring, I can make that door shut just slowly enough so that it gets to the frame with exactly the right amount of energy, right? Okay, so that's the concept of damping. Let's take a look at a few examples to make sure that you really understood this. And the first one I'd like to consider is the following case. Now, before we go any further, let me perhaps ask you to consider this case. Can we solve for this? Take a minute in your book and draw three axes side by side. And the first axis represents F0. The second one represents F1. The third axis represents F2. And all of these are time-based. Looking at the time domain response. And I'd like you to draw what F1 and F2 would look like if we had the following input in the first tank in F0. So F0 is a flat line for some period of time, and then I make a step up. And let's say that that step occurs at time 0. What is F1's response going to look like? I'll give you a hint, it starts with a flat line. 
to recall the F1. Not a trick question. It's a first order response, okay? So you should have a curve that looks like that, and the height of that response is what? What do we know how high of that response is going to go? The gain. How much is the gain? So what, is, what do we know about this? Stable, and the key is it's the same <coughs> value. So in engineering sense, we know that, we expect that. If I increase the flow here at F0, eventually this flow 1 has to get that same flow as F0. So if I make a step increase of, say, 2 units in F0, I must see the same 2 units eventually leaving at F1. Okay, now the trick question comes. What is F2's response to F1? Okay, so it's a first order response, but our input isn't a step anymore. So F2 is definitely a first order response with respect to F1, but F1 isn't a step, so what does F2 look like? Um, would it follow like you do uh, starting at zero there? Yeah, and then go up. Oh, oh, okay. um, so you go do the exact same thing as F1 and then go up and up. Okay, so Go up to two units. So an interesting, yeah, yeah. I, I can see where you're, you're thinking, right? But from an engineering sense, do we expect the flow here to double at F2 if I make the one unit change in F0? No. Okay, so we know that, what do we know about the final value of F2? Okay, so it's got to be this value continue. We have to end up at that point eventually. The question I'm asking is how do we get to that point? Okay, could be oscillatory. Okay, so A is positive. R is positive as well. Are there large values or small values? I'm gonna to prove to you in a minute that it doesn't make it doesn't matter. Okay, but so I, I like that, that type of thinking, yeah? Okay, are we going to have a time delay? Yeah, I like the way you're thinking as well. Are we going to have a time delay? Yes. We should. The equation doesn't have one. Okay, that's also fair. What you're going to have is, are we going to have an underdamped response, overdamped response, or critically damped? Overdamped, yes, votes for overdamped, votes for critically damped, votes for underdamped, so oscillations. <laughs> okay. There you go. Okay, so it depends on what the areas of the tanks are. So if tau 1 equals tau 2, you know that R1 and A1 equals R2 and A2, what sort of response are we going to get? Critically damped. Okay. If R1 and R2 are different, we're going to get an underdamped or overdamped. Which one? Overdamped. Okay. Underdamped is the one with oscillations. Overdamped means that we get a slower rise and we get a steady state. So I'm emphasizing it. It won't look quite as drastic as that, but I want to emphasize the time domain response. Okay. 
So you make this input in F1 to your process that has a first order response out over to F2, but there's this propagation of the dynamics. So there, there will be a rise in F2 at time zero, but a smaller rise than in F1, right? Because F1 has to first reach F2. So if we take a look at this analysis, then you can obviously see that it's critically damaged because tau1 and tau2 are the same. So we can make, just make a note of that then to be clear. If tau1 equals tau2, the response is critically damped. And let's perhaps work through some numeric values. Let me say tau1 is equal to 7.5, which was actually from a few classes ago when we used the value of 7.5 for i times a. And that's also equal to tau2. So what are the roots of the system? The roots are minus 1 over 7 and a half. And the key thing I want to emphasize here is the negative value. It doesn't matter what the numeric value is. The fact that it's negative is important and plays into stability understanding. So negative roots imply stable response. But what I do want you to consider quickly is calculate for me the tau and the xi value if I had written it in this other representation. So in other words, if I had written it in this form that's over here, what would have been my tau and what would have been my xi value? You don't actually have to calculate xi, you already know what it is, right? But prove to yourself using this formula that you get what you expect. <coughs> so when whenever you solve these kind of questions, do we first assume that you know, use the one over tau one s plus one and tau two s plus one? Solve for tau and tau two, and then go back and plug in and find out tau and. Sometimes you, uh, the next example I'll show you. Sometimes you cannot write it in the form of tau one s and tau two s. In this this case, we can, so we can write it in both representations. Okay, so if we use that other representation, you'll find tau squared is equal to tau one tau two, okay, which is then. 7.5 squared, so that implies that tau is also 7.5. That's, that's an important result I wanted you to understand from this. When the system is critically damped, the two time constants are the same, that overall tau, that is just tau on its own, is the same value. It refers to the time constant of the second order system. Xi then, if we sub into the formula for xi, that's tau 1 plus tau 2 divided by 2 times the square root of tau 1 tau 2. Well, that simplifies to 1 in the case when tau 1 equals tau 2. So you get a tau, 2 tau on the numerator, you get 2 tau on the denominator. So the system is critically damped. Let's take a look at an example we saw in assignment 3. So I'll write up the transfer function over here in assignment 3. What do the roots represent? We're just simply interested right now in the fact that our roots are negative. It's a stable response. Let's take a look at the example from assignment 3. We had g of s. I'll take a modification of it, just take 1 over s squared plus 2s plus 5. Can you write this in the form 1 over tau 1s plus 1? Can you write it in that form? Can you find the tau 1 and tau 2? <coughs> okay, 
Okay. Yeah? Yes? No? No? Okay, so what are the roots then of that polynomial in the denominator? Complex, what are they? <laughs> okay, quadratic formula, right? So use your quadratic formula that you know, and you can find that the roots are a equals one, b equals two, c equals five. So the roots then are x equals plus or minus, uh, minus b plus or minus the root. Okay, right. squared minus 4ac over 2a. Right. If you sum in those numbers, you get minus 1 plus or minus 2i. 2j, which is Okay, so complex roots, negative real part. I'm going to emphasize this negative real part. We're going to talk about that negativity in a few classes from now. So negative real part. I'm just hinting towards a future class where that's going to be an important discussion. And complex, complex conjugates. So what can we say about the response to a step input for this system? Oscillatory, what is xi going to be? What is xi? Is xi equal to 1? Less than 1? So what is xi in this case? What a tau or what a xi? Tau, one, what's tau? Yep, two, there you go. No, no tau. <coughs> Anyone got a tau value? It's not one and it's not two. Tau is equal to 
one of the root five, and xi is equal to one of the root five. <coughs> you have to be able to move between these two representations. Or at least understand how you can get it. One, one of them. Can we 
put any constraints on Zai? Zai is always positive. It's always going to be between zero and greater than one. Okay. Zai is always going to be greater than one if those two tiles are positive. Why can we say that? and tau 2 is positive, so I require that constraint and tau 1 not equal to tau 2, then xi is greater than 1, okay? which implies our response is always underdamped or overdamped. This is why we don't see engineering systems that oscillate. Right? We make changes to our processes, we very seldom see them oscillate. Because our systems are very often first order or close to first order behavior, put them in series, we still don't see oscillations. So we can say that simply because the roots are S is equal to minus 1 over tau 1 and S equals minus 1 over tau 2. There's no complex part. I mean, there is no complex part. And that implies no oscillation. Now there's a reason why I keep bringing up oscillation and why you keep seeing oscillations in tutorials and assignment questions. Let me just perhaps emphasize why that's important. And if we consider our systems, let's think back right to the first week of this course where we looked at the goals of process control. The goals of process control are twofold. One is maintain our process at set point. <coughs> okay, so what we'd like to see is our system behaving in such a way that we move about set points with minimum deviation. Okay. And we call that problem, or this issue, we call disturbance rejection. Disturbances are things that will impact our process and try to move us away from set points, and our control system's goal is to counteract those disturbances to keep us at set points. So that's one, one goal of process control. The other goal is what we call set point change. So the set point change says, here's my set point, and I'd like to move to some new set point. refinery systems, they see, okay, the price of crude has changed. In order to maximize the profitability of our process, we need to shift our distillation column to operate at some new temperature. Okay, there's, in a 4G course that you take next year, possibly as an elective, San Yim, who works at Suncor, 
That's his job. Build economic models to determine where's the best place to run your process to make the most money. And what these optimizers do is then they download new set points to all the feedback controllers. So periodically throughout the day, new set points are automatically propagated down to various controllers in the process. And then the process's goal is to respond and get that process to the new set points efficiently. So if the process is operating around here, its goal is to get their value. <coughs> If it does this, it's inefficient. Okay? So if it overshoots that set point and then gap comes back, that, that can have a significant economic penalty. If it does this, in other words, an overdamage response, that can also have a significant economic penalty. Okay? Achieving your set point in the shortest time with the less least energy is really, really important to our process control systems. So that's why I keep talking about oscillations and why it's important that we understand the nature of Xi and what it's doing. So I hope that help puts it a little bit into context and gives you a bit of an idea of where we're going. So these two goals, we're going to start focusing on those next week. Next week, we're going to start looking at feedback controllers. Up to now, we spent five weeks looking at processes and at control systems. Next week, we're going to bring the two together. And you've already had a hint of that, right? In the last tutorial, you did the transfer function for a whole feedback control system, right? So we're going to see that in action. Any questions on these topics? Now, the final example I want to point out quickly is, let's take that tank example we considered a little earlier. Now, how many of you have finished the reactor design course? Okay, how many of you have not finished the reactor design course? Okay, so let me hint where you're going to go in the reactor design course. In reactor design, what you're going to see is if you put a whole lot of CSTRs in series, you get a plug flow reactor. Okay, so plug flow reactors, you know, CSTR reactors, you know. Right? Everyone knows both those reactors. Some half of you in the class don't know yet that if you put a whole lot of CSTRs in a row, you approximate a plug flow reactor. And what's a plug flow reactor? Well, that's just a big pipe. And if I put an input over here, I see an output over there with some delay as it moves through the pipe. So let's take a look at what we looked at earlier. We said if this is F0, and that's F1, and this was F2, F0 is a step input. Okay. F1 was a first order response. So F1 had that sort of zero. Two words, an underdamped or overdamped response. Overdamped, so this is now second hand to us. Overdamped response, underdamped response, under, under, sorry. Overdamped, uh, internal rise, and need that set point, uh, that final value. If I put enough tanks in series, let's take a look at what happens in this final tank. You know that enough CSTRs in series behaves like a plug flow reactor. What happens if I put this into a plug flow reactor? What do I see up here? The same step function but delayed. Okay, so put enough first order systems in series, what you'll get then is this response delay. Now, this will make that a, almost a step. 
because it's not going to be exactly the same ever. But put enough of these CSTRs in series, enough first order systems in series, and the sum of this tau plus tau 2 plus tau 3 plus tau 4 up to tau a will estimate or approximate the delay. So that just completes a little bit of the picture I, uh, of multiple systems in series tied up with time delay. It's not an important concept for this course, why I'm standing three and four, but it is an important understanding of linking reactor design in first order systems. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. And that's later. Yeah, we'll, we'll look at, at some ways of approximating the data that you all missing out. Okay, so then we have four minutes left, three minutes left. I just quickly want to talk about the midterm and the strategy here that I would like to propose. So remember back to the first tutorial? What did we do in the first tutorial? You did it group test, um, individual test, and then you did it in groups. What did you feel about the group test? Better. You want to do that this afternoon? So this is a this is a proposal. You don't have to do it. Zero point two times your group grade. That's zero point eight times your individual grade. That becomes your midterm grade. Or 1.0 times your individual grade. And I'll take whichever is the grader. <laughs> okay? So, no risk if you do it. You don't have to do it. If you don't want to come to tutorials after me, you don't have to. You'll simply get the largest grade. The reason why there's no tutorial this afternoon, I don't, we haven't covered a whole lot of work to do a tutorial on. So I figured, well, why not do this? Has to be groups of four. Has to be groups of four. And then you get the group grade blended with your individual grade, and I'll pick the highest of the two. But it's similar to IRA that you can do. You can't come to tutorial. The no, this is the Friday tutorial group. Yeah. Then we'll do the Monday group, we'll do the same thing on Monday. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Friday group will do this today, the Monday group will do this. Just a second. Any, I, so to be clear, you don't have to do this. If you don't do it, obviously the second option will apply. If you do do it, it has to be in groups of four. And the idea is, like, I've always said this in my course, my courses are not about grades, my courses are about understanding the material. The purpose of the collaborative group work is you'll find you'll understand the material a lot more all the time, after the time. Yeah. 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 You'll repeat the midterm today, you have two hours, if the group finishes before the two hours are up, you can leave. But yeah, I'm leaving at 4.30, so you have to two hours. <laughs> 